Welcome to Haul Around the World, presented by Crushing Comics. I'm your host, Crisis with a K, and I'm here in my Wellington, New Zealand home, which is probably around the world from many of you. And as it turns out, it's around the world from most of the places that you might buy collected edition comic books. So to have a collection like this, it's got to get hauled around the world. I'm talking about three brand new books to me today, and I'm going to just reveal them to you now, not keep you in suspense, kind of from biggest to smallest, both physically and in my amount of excitement. So the biggest, which we'll talk about last, is a brand new Dazzler Marvel Masterwork, Dazzler Volume 2. Always exciting to get some new Dazzler collected in color in this house. Then we have Black Panther Epic Collection Volume 3, Panther's Prey. I have a lot to say about this one. But first, let's sm start with a smaller book, which is Maker Comics Build a Robot. And to talk about that book, I'm going to talk about some other Maker Comics, including this one, Bake Like a Pro, which has been in our house for quite a while now. These Maker Comics, they are released by First Second. First Second mostly puts out original graphic novels. I can't think if I've ever seen a floppy from them in previews. And I think I was introduced to them by buying their Olympian series by George O'Connor. They're really great. They tell the story, each one, in about 66 pages of a primarily uh, infamous or famous Greek Olympic god or figure, and it's really great. It's great for kids of all ages. My daughter loves them. They just got a whole lineup on the shelf. They have a connecting picture on the spines. They're great. So I started to pay a lot more attention to First Seconds releases, because I was like, these are pretty reliably good kids' comics. And I think I picked up a couple other books when I noticed this line, the Maker Comics line. So here's the other ones that have come out in the line. Maker Comics Fix a Car, Create a Costume, Draw a Comic, Grow a Garden, and build a robot, which is this new one here. So I think the first one we had in our house was draw a comic. And I was like, the kid likes comics. She likes drawing. It'll be, you know, like a fun, you know, stocking stuffer type of gift to give her at some point during the year. When I tell you this kid went to school in her make a comic, I mean, she devoured every page, every technique. And the thing about these that I learned is they're really good step-by-step -step guides for not just kids doing something, like explaining how a thing is done. It's, it's narrative. It has characters. It's actually like a sequential comic book. But then the characters go through the process of doing the thing, and they explain the thing to the reader as they are doing it. So in the Make a Comic one, they talk about everything from thumbnailing to making maquettes that actually fold up so the right pages are facing each other, to lightboxing, doing enlarging, fill, you know, having borders on your page, all the way through producing a final comic book. And it's it's amazing. I would come downstairs and I would find the kid with like masking tape on the window of our sliding door. And I'm like, why is there tape on our door? And she would say, oh, I made a perfect border page of the perfect size. So I'm um, lightboxing the borders I traced onto all of these other paper. I mean, she really, really went to it. So then we picked up the costume one. She actually made a costume for one of her dolls. So I was like, this is cool. You know, like some kids are really make oriented kids and whether your kids are or they aren't, even if they're eating into reading comic books, because the protagonists take you through the making of the thing, I find the kids are really inspired to make the thing. And so I bought it for some friends here. Their kids liked it. It kind of became a thing. So then we had this bake like a pro. Now this one made me a little bit more nervous because I'm like, okay, they, the worst thing you could do in those other ones is what, like break a pencil, get some marker on one of our windows or some tape stuck to them. Uh, clearly the sewing of the costume was done with a little bit of supervision, but bake like a pro. I mean, we're talking about ovens at this point. I'm like, sh I was a little nervous. But no, it follows the same formula. It explains why cookies work, why breads rise. It has ingredients. And it's funny, the bread talks. It has little talking bread. It's adorable. So at this point, I'm like, let's go. I actually learned some stuff from that one. So I got this one, Build a Robot. Now, my child is obsessed with robots and technology and putting together technological things. But I was nervous because like, what kind of a robot are they even going to tell you to make? What's really interesting about this is first, it kind of gives you some background. It doesn't just assume that you already know what robots are in the real world. And so it has this robots, totally not evil timeline that explains everything that's a robot from an original clockwork robot like creation called Automata by uh, Chinese artists in 200 BCE, all the way through inventor Kevin Granin creating the word, world's first robotic armpit with the ability to sweat in 2011. So it really characterizes that robot is not just this little boxy creature who waddles around. It's anything that can take an automated uh, action. 
And then it starts to explain a sequence of ways that you can do this. Now, some, it, it's, some of them require some things that you might not be okay with giving your kids for an experiment. At one point, they want a vibrating toothbrush. I don't know how, how cheaply that can be had. But a lot of the things in here are things that are just built to vibrate a little bit, move a little bit, an LED that lights up a little bit. So it's not like they are going into like a hardcore construction project. Uh, but it actually goes into explaining gears. There's a car bot uh, that actually could potentially move. So this one maybe requires a little bit more supervision. And some of the charts and things in here are much more detailed than the ones in the past ones. So I don't know if Build a Robot is the first one you should get for your kids, but I'm a huge fan of these series. And if your kid likes comic books or making comic books at all, I really, really highly suggest you get that draw a comic. Now I'm probably going to get all of them. Grow a Garden seems pretty uh, innocuous, but I'm a little nervous about fix a car. Like what is, what is it going to tell the kid to do? Am I going to walk outside? She's going to be like under the hood of the car. We'll see. Okay, moving on. Now let's talk about Black Panther Epic Collection. To talk about this epic collection, which covers Black Panther from 1989 to 1994, I think we actually first have to talk about his other two epic collections. So his first epic collection, which is Panther's Rage, covers him from 1966 to 1976. It has his initial appearance in Fantastic Four 52 and 53, totally classic if you've never read them, and then his starring series in Jungle Action 6 through 24. Okay, so that's pretty logical. There's really nothing else you would imagine to be there. It makes sense. Now, in his masterwork, which I've got right over here, I do not believe that they reproduced those Fantastic Four issues uh, because that wasn't really their jam in masterworks, like reproduce issues that were in other lines. So this just starts with Panther's Rage 6. So basically, this epic collection is the same as this masterwork, except for it has the Fantastic Four issues, okay? So now we come to volume two. This volume collects from 1977 to 1988, and this is called Revenge of the Black Panther. This collects Black Panther 1977, 1 through 15, material from Marvel Premiere 51 through 53, Marvel Team Up 100, which is his story with Storm, and a miniseries, Black Panther 1988, 1 through 4. Now let's get the next masterwork off the shelf. This does not push that far. It only has Black Panther 1 through 15 and the Marvel Premiere story. So this took us further than the Masterworks, and it left us off at an interesting point. Because after that 1988 miniseries, one through four, uh, there is not another Black Panther series until a series called Panther's Prey. I'm just going to look down here and remind myself when that is. 1991. And that's it, really, until his 1998 Christopher Priest series. But the um, thing to think about is, but what other Black Panther stuff happens? Because that's the magic of these epic collections. Unlike most of the masterworks, the epic collections have the ability to reach into other stories that are significant for that character and create a continuous line of reading for that character. So let's talk about the contents of this epic volume three. It's Black Panther, Panther's Prey 1 through 4, and material from Marvel Comics Presents 13 through 37, which is about eight-ish issues worth of material, and 148. Solo Avengers 19, Marvel Super Heroes 1, Marvel Fanfare 60, and Fantastic Four Unlimited number 1. Now, I have a very comprehensive Black Panther guide on my site, and I went through the guide to think, is there anything else they could have possibly put in here that would fill this out further? And the answer is really no. The only other significant Black Panther story that happens between 1988 and 1998, when the Christopher Priest uh, series starts, is that he's in the uh, Vibranium something, Vibranium Agenda. Let me see, what is that called? The Vibranium Vendetta, which is a crossover through Spider-Man annuals. So it's going to be collected in a Spider-Man epic. It would be weird to duplicate the whole story, I think, here. Otherwise, he has very scant, very scarce guest appearances. This is really that material. Uh, so it's got this full Marvel Comics Presents material, and then it collects past that to that 91 series, and it also puts all the other stuff in the correct order. The other thing to know, though, is that there was actually a book put out with that Marvel Masterworks material in it, and I think it was also called Panther's Prey? No? Panther's Quest? Panther's Quest. And that was in... Uh, well, what, what, where are we? What year is this? That was in 2018. I almost said 1998, because I keep saying 1998. And I bought it! 
Because I was like, well, who knows if the Epic Collections are going to collect all that? Who knows if there's ever going to be a third Epic Collection? Might as well get it. And so that held that space on my shelf. But this is so much better because it collects to the 1991 series and it has all these other appearances in it. So that 19 or that see, I'm listening again, that 2018 book is totally, totally uh, useless now. You don't need it. This completely contains it. And this is the superior book. Uh, and this is all. There's nothing else to do in a Black Panther epic unless they just do the Christopher Priest complete collections as epic collections, which they could do. It's their prerogative, but I wouldn't put it past them. Maybe in two or three years or when the Black Panther movie comes out, it would be time to reissue those in a new format. But um, this is this is really it. You've got a complete line of epics. So now let's talk about the build. Um, it's, got a, it's got a decent spine quality. There's nothing really notably bad about the covers. Um, stock is not the super high gloss stock like we've seen in Silver Surfer. It holds the colors well. There's some really unusual coloring that's a little bit more painterly in some of this Panther's Prey material, and actually in some of the Marvel Comics Presents material as well. And I think it holds the colors really well. I think if you went with a really glossy paper, some of the textures here would look a little bit wrong. And I think if you went totally matte, it wouldn't kind of pop off the paper. I think this is a good choice. I really do. I think this is a really nice build quality. There's a little bit of show on the whites, but not enough that it really bothers me. I mean, I can see on a page like this, this border comes up a little bit higher than the border on the page behind it. And I could see a little bit, but not in a way that distracts me. Although I can, I can fully see the opposite side of the other page through it. So probably some people will feel like it's a little bit thin. This is going to be one of those three current ones. I don't know that I have a guess. It's, uh, it is produced by Silisco. So highly recommended if you like Black Panther, especially if you want to have that stuff uh, leading all the way up to the 90s. Now, after this, he does make a few appearances after 1994. He is briefly a cast member in Fantastic Four shortly before Onslaught. So I don't want to make it out that this is like every single Black Panther even, you know, shows his face, but it's everything significant and really good stuff. Okay. Dazzler. It's, it's always a holiday when I got a new Dazzler book in my hands. And this collects... Dazzler's number 14 through 25. Now, we didn't know for sure how far this would collect because the first one, you know, collected through 13, but it had a couple of prelude things in it too. Where is it up here? It had her appearances in um, X-Men 130 and 131, and it has Amazing Spider-Man number 203. And actually, this new one is maybe a hair thinner than number one. Maybe just a hair. And... Um, but it, it collects the right amount of stuff. Her series only goes to 42 issues, but we've also probably got to get the four issue Beauty and the Beast miniseries in there, as well as her graphic novel, which is several issues in length, uh, practically. So that means we have another 18, 22, 23. So it makes sense. The, the next two are probably going to be a similar size to this. The thing that I love about Dazzler as a series is not that it's just Dazzler, but it's kind of another Marvel team up book. Like, you know, Spider-Man had Marvel team up, also with the Human Torch. Thing had Marvel 2-in-1. Dazzler could have very easily been called, like, Marvel Spotlight. Well, there was a Marvel Spotlight. It could have been called, like, Marvel, I don't know, Marvel Dazzles. But the point is that in almost every issue, Dazzler is hanging out with somebody, fighting with somebody. And this one, you know, we've got her versus the Enchantress, versus Doctor Doom, the Hulk, um, Galactus. Terax. So there's a lot of good stuff in here, including, um, oh no, that was the first volume. So now in the second volume, we've got She-Hulk, Spider-Woman, the Enchantress again, Angel, uh, the Absorbing Man, Rogue, and also Power Man and Iron Fist. So it's really more or less a, a team-up book featuring Dazzler. And I have to say, I've paged through this already, and the line restoration, the color work in here is really gorgeous. I mean, it, it's Masterworks quality in a way that really highlights that some of these issues were beautifully drawn. This one page has really struck me. It has this close-up of her singing, and um, it really strikes me because the fine lines on the microphone, and then also on her face, she says the shading on her nose, really fine lines underneath her eye, and the lines are, they're really, really, really fine, and like all of the shading that is on her um, eyelid there, it's really, really delicate. And it comes through and the blue is this beautifully saturated color 
It really, really works. So I think it's beautifully restored. And I don't think you have to be this big dazzler nerd to like it. I think that it's got a great picture of the Marvel Universe at that point. And it's just a fun team-up book. If you like Marvel team-up and Marvel 2-in-1, you probably will also like Dazzler. The one issue in here that I'm really familiar with, or actually the two, is the issues with Rogue. I page through all these Dazzler issues because I do have a Dazzler guide and I go through every appearance when I make a guide. But in terms of like sitting down and reading, I've got this in Essentials, which is black and white. So I use those more for reference than like sit down and stare at it reading. But I did read the issues with Rogue. And it's really interesting because if you follow Rogue's path from like Avengers Annual 10 to then, uh, you know, Uncanny X-Men 158, where she breaks into the Pentagon to 171, you only really get like a brief glimpse at who she is and the problems she's having and, and kind of the way that she is rubbing up against Mystique's goals for her and for the sisterhood of brother of sisterhood of brotherly mutants, sisterhood of evil mutants at that time. And this little interlude with her fighting Dazzler actually adds a lot to that rogue arc, as do all of Rogue's appearances. Really, it, it, they're not all by Claremont, but they form a really interesting, intriguing, well-formed arc so that when she gets to Uncanny X-Men 171 and she's really at wit's end about her multiple personalities in her body, uh, it really actually works and makes sense. And these are all by Danny Fingeroth, so no Chris Claremont in sight. Stephen Grant runs, uh, writes issue number 25 here. So I really love it. I don't know that I can like heartily recommend it to everybody because again, it's Dazzler, it's the 80s. But if you're the kind of person who likes those team up these things, if you want to see some of these characters as they appeared outside of their own titles, I think it's a really fun book to get a hold of. That's all I've got to say about this haul around the world. Three books that I'm pretty excited about. Uh, two of them because I hotly anticipated them. And one because there are going to be some robots built in my house, I am sure. And as the timeline at the beginning of the book said, hopefully they're going to be totally not evil. So uh, until I get to talk to you again, I would love to know in the comments, did you pick up this Black Panther epic? Did you pick up this Dazzler Masterworks? And are there any kids in your life who would dig and make her comic. Until I hear from you again and get to see you again, this has been Hall Around the World presented by Crushing Comics, and I very much hope that you are well. <laughs>